Hello, and welcome to a very special Unbiased Gear Review. I've been looking very forward to this. This is the Ormsby Goliath GTR. So first of all, let's go over the specs of this instrument. This is the new headless model from Ormsby Guitars. It is made in South Korea, but final quality control is done at their shop in Perth, Australia. We have a mahogany body with a Makassar ebony veneer. We have a bolt-on three-piece rock maple neck with an ebony fingerboard. We have... 24 jumbo frets, stainless steel frets no less. We have hardware at the headstock and the bridge by Hipshot. This is a custom design made strictly for this particular guitar. The pickups are Ormsby Nunchucker 8 and De La Creme 2 uh, humbuckers with with 500k master volume, master tone with a push-pull for coil split and a three-way toggle switch. And this is also a multi-scale design with a 25 and a half inch treble side to a 28.2 inch bass side. So for those of you out there who are watching this who may not know, this is a long time coming. So I just want to address a concern that had been building up for a while with regards to this particular instrument. Run 4 from Ormsby's GTR line uh, was held up for quite a long time because of sights issues with regards to not the wood that Ormsby was using for their guitars, but rather because of inspections going on with the wood that was being brought in for other production runs that were being scheduled before the Ormsby line. So because of rampant problems 
at this particular facility with just getting the wood through the inspection process so that guitars could be built. Because of that, this instrument has been about two years coming. Been waiting for this for a long, long time. I am so freaking happy that it is here. It is an absolutely fantastic guitar. I've actually got a second one that is here as well that has some slightly different specs to it, but I am going to mainly focus this review on this particular one, the Makassar Ebony one from Run 4, um, the first set of Run 4, where there was three different models. There was this one, there was a red and gold chameleon finish, and there was also a copper top finish. This one is the Makassar Ebony Veneer. This one has the mahogany body on it. It is very, very resonant, very loud. Even when unplugged, it is very, very comfortable. This contour that is right here for the arm cut this arm bevel is very very nice to rest your wrist on as you're playing it there are some beveled edges here which are really nicely done and just add to a little bit of comfort aspect when you're playing high up on the higher frets looking at the neck joint there with the bolt on there is no gap to speak of whatsoever so it is very very firmly bolted into place there the uh, hardware is pretty damn nice. I'm always a big fan of anything hip shot, and the hardware that is on this particular guitar is no exception. The locking nut mechanism is very, very easy to figure out. It's just an Allen key. You turn it, you barely tighten it down a little bit, and the string goes in place. The bridge system is also very, very easy to figure out. Um, there was a video posted by Perry and the Ormsby team of how to restring this beast, and it came in very handy, but in all honesty, it's kind of so easy to figure out you almost don't need the video. There is basically a mechanism in here that just goes backwards and forward. You slip the string in through the top, just kind of wedge it into place, shouldn't even say wedge it. It really just kind of rests in place with a little piece of metal kind of holding it in perfect uh, position, so to speak. And then you just basically tighten it up until you reach the string tension and the tuning that you want, and you're good to go. I say this because immediately after I received the thing, one of the factory uh, strings did snap. Why don't I just drop tune this sucker to see what it can do. So because of that, it is uh, in drop D tuning right now with 11 through 85 strings on it. And it is holding up really, really nicely. It is staying in tune very, very nicely. And it is also like sounding super duper good. I'm gonna get to that though in a minute. More about the construction and the playability so looking at this beautiful, beautiful fretwork, we've got a nicely rolled off fretboard edge there. Um, it's actually got kind of an extreme roll to it, uh, maybe about an eighth of an inch, I should say, just from like start to finish. It's kind of a wide rolled off edge, which is pretty nice, pretty comfy. The fret edges themselves are dressed really really nicely there as you can see very nicely polished off very nicely rolled off a little bit it's not something super boutique where you know some guy with a file spent hours and hours on it but it is extremely nice all the same they still made sure that there's absolutely no sharpness to be found whatsoever on these fret eds it is a joy to play on in that respect what makes it even better, I briefly addressed this in the unboxing video, but you want to talk about a joy to play on. Check out this new neck profile. That is a super flat, 
super rounded off C shape there. Very, very thin. Those of you that have played Ormsby's in the past know that their previous neck profile did have some pretty wide shoulders on the sides of the neck. The fact that there's practically no shoulder to speak of on either side, in all honesty, it's just very, very comfortable, very easy to navigate and do chords on, do fast lead runs, do some brutal metal chugs on it. Um, the finish on the back of the neck is also one of the smoothest satin finishes ever. That's one of the things that I've always loved about Ormsby GTR series guitars. That finish that's on the back of the neck is just honestly one of the smoothest, one of the fastest satin neck finishes you will ever find. If you're getting something like this, you're probably looking for something that can handle a little bit of technical prowess here or there. And man, that neck finish that's on there is exactly what that's made for. That is just a really, really well done finish. Speaking of the finish, um, I do like the gloss finish of the body. It's really well done. You look over this thing looking for any sort of imperfections. I mean, we all know from buying like other glossy finished guitars in the past that sometimes maybe the wood filler just isn't quite right. So the finish itself just kind of dips into the guitar a little bit. Man, this one is probably one of the nicest gloss bodies I've ever found. I, I, I can't find fault with this finish at all. It's very nicely done. The fan is much more extreme than what you're typically used to from a lot of other instruments. Most eight string guitars, you will typically find about a one and a half to two inch fan on it. My Strandberg, for example, is a 26 and a half to a 28 inch scale. My Hoppus is a 26 to a 28. It, it's, it's a noticeable fan, but it's not as extreme as this. We are looking here at a, a two, basically a two and three quarters of an inch fan. So it's pretty extreme. The extra tension that is on the base side is very, very welcome. Especially since I mainly got this thing because I wanted to play some real brutal shit on this. You know, being able to have that extra string tension on the bass side is a fucking godsend. I love it. I love how I can just do my tremolo picking, do like super breakdowns on it, and like lots of weird chordal stuff on it, and having that extra string tension allows the notes to ring out nice and clear. Speaking of ringing out nice and clear, being that this is a headless, it still has that awesome headless quality that you typically find where those low notes, especially on extended range headless guitars, just ring out like a fucking bell. But by having it still at 25 and a half inches on the treble side, if you're really into playing those super flashy and shreddy leads, this is actually very, very comfortable and very easy to get acclimated to this fan. So in my other Ormsby Goliath, I did make a special request to have a hand-wound Hot Rocks humbucker put in there, and I'm, I'm in love with that, but I really wanted this instrument to still have the stock nunchucker 8 so that I could have a little bit of tonal variety going on between my two Goliaths. And I gotta tell you, I am loving the nunchucker 8. The nunchucker sounds great in 6 string and in 7 string uh, instruments, but what I am finding, and maybe this is just all in my head, but to my opinion, hearing the nunchucker 8 in an 8 string format sounds actually like considerably better even than how awesome it sounds in the six and seven string versions. It just has a lot of punch to it, especially when you drop down the tuning like this, like I've got this thing currently in drop D. Man, having just that extra punch is really, really nice. <laughs>
as much fun as it is to just jam on that eighth string, man, this thing is so versatile. You can play your favorite six and seven string songs on this thing too. That coil split is just such a really, really nice sounding coil split too. Like it doesn't sound fake or disingenuous like some coil taps sometimes sound. This is a real deal coil split so you get that actual single coil tone. And man, especially on an instrument like this where it's extended range, that basically takes you right away to Gentown. <laughs> I love it, man. That is such a good fucking tone. It's kind of got a little bit of sweetness to it, too, almost like a neck pickup would. So, honestly, I find myself just kind of staying on the bridge pickup a lot when I'm doing solos, too. It's kind of got a little bit of a subdued treble bite to it. Uh, when you're playing leads, which is really, really nice because I don't have to roll back the tone pot when I'm recording. So it's just kind of in a very nice tonal sweet spot all on its own. The neck pickup is also pretty kick-ass too. Kind of just has that nice like modern vintage tone to it. It's very very sweet. It's very fluid sounding. A little bright for a vintage voiced pickup but definitely if you're looking for that kind of modern vintage tone this is the perfect neck pickup for you basically. I could not be happier with how this thing sounds myself. So at this point I would like to say that I am definitely a huge fan of Ormsby Guitars. I think that as a company, they're doing some incredible stuff. The custom shop stuff is fantastic, but man, for the bang for your buck that you get from this GTR line, it's ridiculous, man. This is an instrument that sells for about like 1,800-ish Australian, which depending on uh, the mood of the currency exchange can be roughly around like fourteen fifty to fi uh, fifteen hundred dollars American, and honestly, this is a fantastic guitar for that kind of money. I've played many instruments that are custom, that have uh, nowhere near as fine appointments as this factory built instrument does. 
So if you're going to ask me if 1500 for a South Korean built Australian QC'd instrument is worth it, I'm going to say emphatically, fuck yes it is. This is probably going to be my new go-to 8-string guitar. Sorry, Strandberg, I love you, but... Um, dude, I have not been able to stop playing this thing since it arrived. So... I, I'm, I'm enamored. I, I don't really have any other way of putting it except that this thing is just... incredible. So a special guitar demands a special brew to celebrate... Today we have from the Van Hansebroek Brewery in Belgium, we have Trignac 12, which is a Castile triple that is aged in cognac casks. Pours a very, very, very light kind of golden color with a practically white head. The aroma isn't anything too fancy. Definitely has a slight booziness to it, but otherwise uh, just kind of crisp for a Belgian triple. Ooh, the cognac taste, though, is actually kind of subdued, possibly by the fact that this is a beer that I've aged for quite a bit. This is the 2015 vintage of this. So, yeah, it's basically been, uh, it's been sitting for a while. Uh, before I got it, it probably sat for like two years before I owned it. Yeah, the cognac taste is there just ever so slightly, otherwise kind of like slightly like popping apricot notes that pinch you in the back of your cheek a little bit. Very, very, very slight apple flavor in there. Um, just kind of really fresh tasting, even for something that's been sitting for so long. This is honestly something that I could definitely drink all day long. It's definitely got that just kind of richness that you really, really want in a Belgian triple. You know, slightly fruity, but more crisp, slightly grassy, and kind of with like a sweet malty taste to it. Mmm, this is very good. So that's basically all I've got for you. After two years, this is... Something that was definitely worth waiting for, you know. It's unfortunate that it got held up for so long. That was through no fault of Ormsby as a company themselves. They did everything they could to get this moved along as fast as they could. When they finally went to production, man, for those of you guys that were watching in their GTR group on Facebook, the updates were coming like constantly and consistently. Every time something changed, hey, guess what? It's finally going to this. It's finally going to that. Here's pictures. You know, it, it's an unfortunate circumstance, but they made the most of it and they did the best they could with what information they had. And I'm very, very happy that after two years, I own this thing. So with that, Drop a comment in the comment section below. Subscribe to my channel. Give this video a like. If you dig the guitar, please check out Ormsby's website. If you dig the band that's on my shirt, the mighty Morbid Angel, their link is also in the description below. And if you dig the beer that I had today, I'm going to also include that link below. I have... A much larger presence on social media these days. I've got a Patreon. I've got an Instagram. I've even got a fucking Twitch account for when I'm bored and I'm playing video games. Seek me out. I'm out there to be found. But thank you so much for tuning into this video. And there will be many more videos to come.